Hello, my friends, and not yet friends. The time has come to make vegan Boston cream donuts. It's been years since I last had one from Timmy's, but I still remember those soft, puffy donuts covered with chocolatey glaze and filled with smooth vanilla pastry cream. It was one of my favorites. The most donuty of donuts are deep fried, but I'll show you the baked option and show you how they do in an air fryer too. Make the pastry cream with a quarter cup of flour, the same volume of sugar, a couple tablespoons of a neutral oil like canola, a little vanilla extract, lemon juice, and a cup of your favorite plain or vanilla plant milk. I like using soy milk as it's the thickest and makes the creamiest pastry cream in my opinion, but other milks work too. Whisk everything together until no lumps remain. Then heat it up over medium or medium high heat until it starts to bubble and get thick. You can actually do this in a microwave too. Just zap it for about two minutes, stirring every 30 seconds so it cooks evenly and doesn't bubble over. Get a little on a spoon or chopstick and taste it when it's cool enough. You want to make sure you've cooked the flour through so it's not grainy but smooth. Plus, you can adjust the cream to your taste by adding a bit of spice or more sweetener or anything you like. This is your vegan pastry cream and there are no rules. When you have this rich, creamy, pudding-like consistency, set it aside and let it cool. This can be made ahead and stored in the fridge for up to three days. Start your dough by measuring out your flour properly. I showed you in my jackfruit bao recipe how to do the fluff, scoop, and level method, but many bakers swear by the spoon and level method. You still need to fluff your flour first, then scoop it spoon by spoon into your measuring cup while taking care not to pack it in. Then level off with a straight edge. For me, the two methods are equally good if you know what you're doing. The spooning though is rather annoying and I'm lazy. So I'd rather use my trusty old kitchen scale for accuracy and less effort. On the less effort note, I'm using my blender's food processor with dough attachment for this recipe. I'm also adding extra gluten flour, aka vital wheat gluten, to give the dough more bounce and strength. It's not 100% essential, but I think it improves the quality of your final product. Plus a tablespoon of ground flax. It also improves the texture of the final product, but if you don't have it, just leave it out and replace with a tablespoon of regular flour. Next in, instant yeast. Give that a quick mix. Now you can dump in the rest of the dough ingredients. Sugar, refined coconut oil or other neutral oils, but coconut seems to turn out best, warm water or plant milk, vanilla extract, and optionally a dash of nutmeg to give that donut shop aroma. Then you can just let it go in your food processor or mixer, or give your arms a workout with a wooden spoon until a nice dough ball forms. Time for the first rise. Really, you can leave it in the food processor or your mixer, just cover it with a damp towel or something, but I decided to take the sticky dough out first instead of doing it later. It might be a little bit difficult to handle, but you can flour your hands lightly and just do your best. You don't have to be graceful, just get the job done. Let it rise for about an hour in a warm place or until it doubles in size. Put your pastry cream in the fridge in the meantime. When your dough has risen, you can take it out of the bowl and onto a lightly floured work surface. Knead it a few times to break down the big air bubbles that have formed in there. The dough will get elastic and bouncy again, so it will give it a rest for 15 minutes. It's not entirely necessary, but I like to make things easier on my hands, so I wait for the gluten to relax a bit before rolling the dough out. I'll use my handy dandy beer bottle rolling pin. You use whatever you like. The dough should be fairly soft and easy to roll out. Roll it to about half an inch or maybe a little bit thinner. I use the width of my fingers as a guide. Then cut out your donut shapes. You could use a proper dough cutter. I'm using a cup. For my last donut recipe, I used a large mason jar ring, but since these are filled donuts without holes, I figure they don't need to be as large. Put 
butcher cut donuts on a well floured baking sheet or one that's lined with parchment paper and just a little dusting of flour. Make sure to space them out so they have room to expand. When you've cut out as many donuts as you can, squish the scraps together and roll out again to cut more donuts. Then cover your donuts up with something that won't stick and let them rise again, about 45 minutes to an hour. When the donuts have doubled in size, it's time to cook them. If you're deep frying, heat up an inch or two of canola or other neutral high smoke point oil in a deep, heavy bottomed pan for even heat distribution. You want your oil at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius. The digital thermometer I usually use stopped working, so today I'm relying on visual cues. I use a chopstick and stick it in. If bubbles form around it, it's hot enough for frying. But if the stream of bubbles is so intense it seems to mist up, it's a bit too hot. Now this is not precise and it's not the best method, but we use what we have. When you lower your donuts in, the oil will bubble up around them. Be super careful. If you're new to deep frying on the stove, please do only one at a time. In about 45 seconds to a minute, the bottom should be golden brown and you can flip it. The other side should only take about 30 seconds to 45 seconds and you can remove it. Let the excess oil drip off, then place it on a paper towel lined rack. Maybe use more than what I have there. That was my last piece of paper towel. Sometimes the oil will get too hot and you'll need to lower the temperature. If your donut puffs up like crazy right away, chances are the oil is a bit too hot. It's not a big problem, but you'll have some wonky looking donuts with a huge air bubble in the middle that will make for a messy cream donut later, but to me, homemade doesn't have to be perfect. When all the donuts are done, let them cool to room temperature before filling and glazing. Let the oil cool down too, and when it's at room temperature, you can strain it and save the oil for another deep frying session. Just keep it in a cool, dark place to prevent it from going rancid prematurely. Deep fried donuts are the standard, but baking or air frying is easier, quicker, probably safer, and way lower in fat. They come out pretty darn delicious too. So even though they aren't the same as the deep fried versions, they are still worth it. To bake, Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. And when the oven has reached temperature, bake for 10 minutes and not a second more. You just want to cook the donuts but not brown them. If you're using an air fryer, preheat it a few minutes or according to the manufacturer's instructions. I set mine to 375 degrees Fahrenheit this time, but 360 or a little lower could do it too. While that's going on, lightly oil the pan and set your dough in it. Then pop them in, set a timer for four or five minutes and let it cook. They come out a little golden on the top and really look more like buns than donuts, but they will get donut -ier later. Just wait and see. When the cooked donuts have cooled to room temperature, we can fill them. First, prep the donuts by poking them with a chopstick. Move the stick around a little to create a little pocket for the pastry cream. Your pastry cream is probably quite stiff from being in the fridge, so loosen it up with a whisk or use an immersion blender like me. Also, as it sat in the fridge, it might have gotten some dried up bitsy, so blending helps to eliminate that. Otherwise, you might push the cream through a mesh sieve to make it really smooth. You'll need a piping bag for this next part. I've tried using plastic bags with a corner snipped off, but it's really messy, so I really recommend a piping bag of some kind. Fill the bag up as best you can. Twist the end and tie it off if you like. Mm -hmm. 
Then insert the tip into the hole you've already made, squeeze, applying even pressure, and fill them up. Some bakers weigh their donuts to make sure they get filled evenly. I'm just going by feel. And sure, you may get some donuts spilling their guts, but it's kind of half the fun. Now we have a whole bunch of cream-filled donuts. Let's get the chocolate glaze on. I'm simply using a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips that happen to be vegan-friendly. And microwaving at 30-second intervals until they are melted. They will still hold their shape, so they might not look completely melted, but they're ready. Add a teaspoon of refined coconut oil and stir. See? I told you they were melted. Carefully dip a donut in. Let the excess chocolate drip off, then back on a wire rack. Repeat with the rest. Beautiful, shiny, chocolatey perfection. But they're taunting you. Unless you want a super messy situation, let them sit until they're set. Takes about a half an hour to an hour depending on the room temperature. I'm sure some of you live in super hot places where this would take forever and it would be better to refrigerate. Lucky for me, I filmed this on a very reasonable 26 degrees Celsius day, and it only took about a half an hour. Homemade Boston cream donuts require patience, and they are so worth it. These deep fried donuts are so legit. Plus, you're in charge of the pastry cream so you don't get those donuts where there's only one bite of cream and the rest is basically bread. Hate that! Speaking of basically bread, the baked version is also pretty darn good. The texture is not as donuty as the fried version, but with that perfect coat of dark chocolate and smooth vanilla cream filling, they really hit the spot. But the air fried one is probably the one I'll make most of the time. The texture is somewhere in between the deep fried version and the baked version, and the method is much less work and safer for an accident prone person such as myself. All versions are best eaten the same day. Remember, you can make the pastry cream and dough ahead of time, so there's really no reason not to serve them fresh. But hey, it's your donut making reputation on the line. You do what you want. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. You would really be helping me out if you did. And subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already so you don't miss any of my easy vegan recipes each week. Bye for now!